Hey everyone, this is a video on how to identify or what at least what Vega gulls look like in winter. The, this is based on photographs I took in Japan over several years in February. So we have um, birds here that are wintering for many locations, a mix of different uh, populations, as well as some individuals that might be misidentified. So take everything with a grain of salt. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, right down below, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you will be getting then a message whenever there's a brand new video. And also if you're into it, uh, if you want to join birdingyourbestlife.com, that is a membership, so a paid site where you can have access to more of these types of uh, videos, full classes on raptors, dowagers, etc., and more coming as we speak. Okay, so I, I'm going to start with the sladyback gull because like Vega gull, sladyback gull is from Asia. It has been showing up more and more frequently throughout North America, and I would say that maybe Vega gull could be more common than sladyback gull in North America, but it's harder to identify. So many of them are getting missed just in the same way that first cycle sladyback gulls are being missed. So as we learn about these birds based on individuals we see in their normal wintering range, we can hopefully move this whole thing forward and start trying to identify Vega gulls and sladyback gulls out here in North America. Sladyback gull is a pretty um, hefty, thick-set gull with uh, dark upper parts, a very um, wide trailing, white trailing edge that comes in here as white tongue tips, what we call the string of pearls, creating that classic slady back um, pattern on the wingtip. And just uh, also see that there's two mirrors and black on 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, to uh, primary 6 on this slady back gull. Vega gulls often have black to primary 5. These are herring gulls, Smithsonianus, North American herring gulls, and they do vary in the continent. We have birds out east that tend to have two mirrors on the um, primaries in the Great Lakes, and out west they tend to have one. Um, they all have real gleaming yellow eyes, orbital rings that tend to be yellow to orange, and pink legs. The eye color doesn't vary too much. Our adult herring gulls in North America are pale-eyed, often gleamingly pale-eyed. So that's key. And this um, wigtip pattern I will talk about a little bit later as we start talking about Vega gull. Western herring gulls, presumably from Canadian Arctic or Alaska that winter in California, they tend to have one mirror and uh, are really classic. Otherwise, when they sit, you know, the um, sort of mid-color gray on the back, blacker primaries, bills vary, but they tend to be sort of um, dull yellow, gleaming yellow eye. And then on the wingtip, we will find that often there are markings on the middle primaries that sort of go up into the gray and many times along the shaft and sometimes on the inside of each feather so you can have like a W pattern showing up in in these gulls uh, what do I mean by that W pattern you might be able to see it here on this this primary it sort of it comes out comes back in like a U and then another U so there's the W right in there okay so keep that in mind as a general pattern to look for in Smithsonianus. So let's ponder this type of herring gull. This is a Vega gull. How does it very, uh, differ from a classic herring gull in North America? They tend to have dark eyes. About a quarter of Vega gulls have pale-ish eyes very few, if any, have gleaming yellow eyes. They can look pretty pale, but when you get them up close, there's speckling in the eye, and often it's in real sunny weather, they, they might look pale like that. Usually they're mid to dark. 
they also tend to have streaking that's concentrated towards the back of the neck, breast sides, more so than on the head. Dark uh, gray upper wings and mantle, darker than the Smithsonianus. So getting to the point that they look more like a California gull in darkness or a mew short-billed gull um, in darkness on the back. Like slatyback gulls, they do have a pretty broad white trailing edge, and it does come in to create pale tongue tips and a uh, restricted set of um, string of pearls. So if we have our 10th primer here, 9, 8, on a, most slatyback gulls, this 8th primary would have a pearl, a little white tongue there, not on this bird because it's a vega gull, and instead it shows up here on 7. Two mirrors is uh, typical, and if we go count from the 10 back, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. 5, P5, is the um, has some black on it. That is classic. Most Vega gulls have black to P5. Some have a full black band right across the, the primary, and others even have black to P4. Uh, We'll talk about this later, but as I'm introducing this species, look at the underwing on this bird. So there's a lot of black on the outer primary, and then it really restricts, and then it looks like just like an L pattern, very clean L pattern. That is something I've noticed that seems to be a key thing to sort of have in your mind to find a flying vega gull. All right, so this is the distribution of multiple different populations, species, subspecies, doesn't matter what you want to call them, um, of herring gull relatives, let's call them herring gull type things, even though they're not all closely related. And um, this is from Europe to Asia, and a couple of things to look for. One thing is that gulls in the old world tend to, in the breeding season, clump out as sort of uh, mid-latitude species or high-latitude species. So there's an Arctic or high-latitude group and a interior or low-latitude group, right? Within the Arctic individuals, this red is um, lesser blackback gull. And as we go farther east, Huglin's gull. Then this green is tamarensis, if you've heard of that. Sometimes I th think they call it um, Tymir gull. And then this orangey color is vega. So while my photographs are from Japan in the winter, right, these birds are breeding in the Arctic. So they're pretty long distance migrants. And then you can see that, oh, you know, hopping over to North American side doesn't seem all that difficult. I would also point out that this blue is a bird called Mongol that sometimes is lumped with Vega gull, sometimes not, and sometimes they're all lumped with herring gull. But we'll look at the fact that this is a very much a um, mid-latitude species, interior breeding, and they also migrate out to the coast in the winter um, while the Vegas migrate south to the coast in winter. The classic Vega gull looks like a darker backed version of our herring gull. Even in this um, individual that you can't compare to anything else, it looks relatively um, deeply colored in terms of its gray back. Black wingtips, dark eye. The bills vary from being green toned to brighter yellow. And again, this streaking pattern where it tends to really clump up on the back of the neck, breast sides, and slightly less streaking on the head. I don't know if that's something that holds earlier in the season before the heads become worn, but at least in February, this is a pretty common pattern. Comparison photo of a Vega gull here and a much darker backed and also more pot-bellied slaty back gull here. You can see the difference in tone. Slatyback is definitely darker backed as an adult than Vega. 
It also tends to have a wider uh, tertial crescent than Vega, although Vega has a pretty good one itself. This bird over on the right is a black-tailed gull. This comparison is again of Sladyback on the far left, Vega on the right. You can see how much paler the Vega is than this particular Sladyback. Um, now this Sladyback is a third cycle, has some black on the uh, tail, it has some brown tones on the wing, and a lot of black on the bill, so it's not a full adult. It may look at slightly less dark than that when it when it um, becomes an adult, but it's still going to be pretty dark. Interesting thing in the middle here is a bird that's back tone is much more like a, our own North American herring gull, so distinctly paler than a vega, pink legs, a rather white head, and uh, I think this is Mongolian gull, and Mongolian gull is the one that I showed you that it breeds in the mid-latitudes around Lake Baikal, and um, it also migrates out to the coast. So you can see Mongolians and Vega gulls together in the wintering season. Uh, Mongolian gull is not one that's expected in North America, at least um, not commonly, as Vega is much more northern and more highly migratory north-south and also breeds much closer to North America. It is much more likely to wind up in North America and California, West Coast, and note that they have bred in Alaska. So they, they actually are a North American breeder. Photos of Vega gulls of different types, what to look for. Different lighting here showing you bird one bird here that looks rather dark, but that's, that's probably the lighting. Um, and dark eyes, all three of these vary in how dark their eyes are. But for the most part, they don't look gleamingly yellow. Even this one with a pretty pale eye does not look yellow like it would on a Smithsonianus herring gull. And um, in comparison to our herring gulls, all of these birds would look darker back. Heads of Vega gulls, again, Dark eyes, varying in how dark they are. This individual lower right is paler. And then, you know, the even midwinter, some of them are developing a pretty good orbital ring. And when you see the orbital rings and they're fully, you know, they're getting in there, they're, they're you know, filling up, <laughs> getting color, they tend to look reddish, almost carmine, very dark red color, not yellow, not orange. And bill colors vary from being rather bright to kind of greenish toned, more like a um, Thayer's skull. In fact, this individual up here, if I just showed you that head, I didn't tell you anything about where it was from. You might say, isn't that a Thayer's skull with that small bill, that steep forehead, that dark eye? And yes, Thayer's skull is a problem in terms of identification. But this individual is not a Thayer's skull. It's a Vega. So Vega and Thayer's can overlap in some looks, but look at the wing tips, you know, primary patterns, darkness of back, other things to uh, try to separate them. Um, and sometimes some Vega gulls will almost give you the idea of looking like a slaty back gull, but again, they're paler and they have more extensive black on the upper and under wings than a slaty back gull. Um, streaking pattern, these two birds, one of them is out of focus, but it still shows you how that that uh, back of the neck, side of the neck, maybe into the side of the breast um, being more coarsely and noticeably streaked as, as compared to the head. Standing Vega gulls, again, look at the fact that some of them can be pretty pale eyed, but not that pale eyed. Um, this individual is actually growing a primary. Remember, this is these are all in February. That would be very rare for a Smithsonianus North American herring gull to be growing a primary in, in February. They're usually done, the latest ones, by January. The streaking pattern, look at that, darkness of back. Um, otherwise, very much like herring gulls in their overall shape, but they can vary from being more petite 
probably females, to much more thick build and thicker necked, probably males. For some reason, some individual birds that appear to be Vega gulls in Japan have yellowish legs. So at this point in time, um, we will consider these Vega gulls. Uh, in this case, this individual over here looks very much in back tone and so forth, just like this, this other individual there. And um, nothing to say that it is anything other than a Vega gull with yellowish legs. They're not bright yellow legs like um, like a black tail gull, as you see these in the back. Often there's a pink tone to them, almost like an orangey colored leg. This individual is slightly paler backed than the average um, Vega. So what these are, are they hybrids with tamarenses? Are they, um, there was a form that was given a name, Burla or uh, Burla gull, Burli? Not clear, but these things do exist. I wouldn't necessarily look for them in North America, although if you did have something with yellow legs that was paled back like this, that would be interesting. Um, because they're relatively rare in Japan. So if they're rare there, um, it's going to be even rarer as a vagrant. There's a classic flying Vega gull with its dark eyes. This one, a dull uh, build individual, dark mantle and wings, big, broad um, trailing edge with the string of pearls coming in. In fact, it suggests almost like a ladyback. But again, 10, 9, 8, the 8th uh, primary doesn't have much going on in it like a sladyback should. And also, um, we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have black to the 5th primary. And then a lot of, um, it's a well a marked L pattern on the underwing on this bird. Sladybacks would have actually a rather gray underwing with black, just black tips here, more like a Thayer's gull. Just to compare with our North American herring gulls, look at the underwing pattern. It looks more like a shallow U rather than an L because there's more extensive dark in these um, sort of P8, P7, I think, than on a Vega gull. As well, all these little dark areas that extend up on the edges of the primaries that mess up the underwing pattern more so than you would see on a, um, a Vega. And these ind this individual actually does have two mirrors and it's a West Coast bird, so that's interesting. This one's got the more classic one. And again, not seeing that classic L pattern, there's almost like slivers of dark coming up into the primaries. That is typical of North American herring gulls. Now look at Vega. Cleaner underwing pattern sometimes gives you more of an L look, or at least um, it's more restricted in the, in the black right here in that outer to sort of eight, um, P10 to P8 area. So you get the L. Um, this one has only one mirror on the primary, so that's interesting, and a relatively pale eye on this individual. But um, remember, they vary. And then this one, a more classic individual again. See this sort of L pattern without as much dark coming in uh, or doing sort of all the groovy stuff that Smithsonianus tends to have. These are general um, aspects of plumage. So, the, you know, but once you see that L pattern in the field, I found that it would, it would show up pretty cleanly. Some of these birds have real nice um, string of pearls, unlike what you tend to find on Smithsonianus, dark eyes, relative um, backs, really broad trailing edges, two mirrors on the outer primaries. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. There's the fifth primary. And um, again, this bird actually seems to be molting in outer primaries in February. Two mirrors, string of pearls, 
boom. And then add that to the ve uh, the uh, dark eye, dark back, Vega. Vega's taken off. Um, and a couple of them on the ground. You can see how dark the back is on this individual, the general streaking pattern, sort of a shawl around the back of the neck. And on the flying birds, two mirrors tends to be the most common little string of pearls that goes up to um, definitely to P7 on birds. And then this more clean cut L-shaped pattern on the underwing than on Smithsonianus, North American. Here in this uh, Vega gull that's coming at you only, this one only with one mirror, you see how that the inside of each one of these primaries is just scooped out nicely and it doesn't have much sort of, of a W pattern that creates the, the dark fringes that go up on a Smithsonianus herring gull. So it's a cleaner underwing pattern. And again, it's extensive on the outer primary, but the fact that it gets narrowed pretty quickly here in the base and it's more less the gray is more extensive in these um, p8 p9 often it gives it sort of more room for that gray to come down and then the wraparound gives you that l shape pattern i've been talking about good view of the underwings here two mirrors look at that how the black in this individual is real restricted this is on the underside of the primary. It wouldn't be on the upper side, probably a lot more black on the upper side of this primary. But here's on the underside and clean look to this. In a slightly more bent wing, this would look L-shaped. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, down to P5 is where the black goes to. And you can see the string of pearls too. Okay, Smithsonianus. With good pale eyes, paler back, flyby. This is in California, one mirror. And you see how the black is not as restricted on the underside of P10 often or P9. So there's more black here. And then that kind of horn of dark that's coming up on each one of these feathers gives it a messy look and also more black on the underwing that masks the L shape and gives you more of a V or U shape um, underside of the primary. That that the way that this kind of goes up like that is a W pattern that you can see on the upper side of the innermost primaries with black. You sort of see that it goes up, down, up, down, up. So that's the W pattern. And that is most marked on Smithsonianus. That's what gives them that underwing look and also part of the upper wing look that it looks a little bit more cut up than Vega gulls. This is a rather Thayer's-like Vega with um, the white mirror here in P9 actually connecting up through to the uh, gray. So, so in this case, it's much more of a restricted amount of black on the underwing, but it's pretty good on the upper wing, string of pearls in there, broad white trailing edge. And um, yeah, this uh, this would be more problematic in how to separate from Thayer's, but uh, it's not quite the right pattern as you see on Thayer's if you look at them in detail. So just uh, keep that in mind. They can look rather Thayer's-like. Here's a Vega. Good string of pearls, two mirrors on this one. Nice clean underwing pattern, L shape, dark gray on the upper wing. Look at the streaking pattern, thick on the back of the neck, side of the neck, dark eye. More Vegas, they come in different shapes and sizes, different lighting situations. They can look rather light in certain sunny situations, but dark eye. And um, again, they tend to have two mirrors, unlike most West Coast um, herring gulls that tend to have just one. This uh, individual here has a very well-marked um, wingtip, actually 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four. This one goes to the fourth uh, primary, which is more typical of tamarensis um, gulls. But uh, look at the clean underwing on that bird, the way it just sort of uh, doesn't have all the spikiness that you would see on herring gull, cleaner L-shaped underwing on these birds as they fly by. So the cleaner underwing pattern, two mirrors, um, dark eye, darker back. Those are the things you're, you're going to be looking for for Vega gull. And they do vary. Um, these two individuals are presumably, um, the one on the left, presumably, I say, because it actually, in close-up view, these legs look kind of yellowish. But um, And this bird is a little darker on the back than this one. This individual has one mirror versus two. My guess is that these are just variations within Vega gull, both of them with dark eyes. And um, still, even with these variations, the fact that some of them don't have really, really good string of pearls, you can still identify birds in North America if you get a good enough look, good enough photographs. Are you, and also look very carefully at your herring gulls over the years so you get to know what they look like. I mentioned this tamarensis gull, and it is a yellow-legged species usually. Sometimes there's some that seem to have pink legs. Again, we don't know if they have pink legs because they're in a hybrid zone with Vega gull or exactly why that is, but they are generally considered a type of lesser blackback gull, the furthest um, group east um, along the Arctic before getting to Vega gull. And, um, some people separate them as different species. Others lump them as lesser blackbacks. Others lump this one and Huglin's gull as, um, as one species. I think they call that Siberian gull. But it doesn't matter in some respects. It just is a thing, and it's out there. Uh, they tend to look a little bit more like lesser blackback gulls in that they're darker backed than Vegas, but they're not as dark backed as some lesser black back gulls. They're more like the grails the eye, the um, British, Icelandic, and the ones that you see in um, Eastern North America. For the most part, they're sort of that level of dark. They have yellowish legs and um, often extensive uh, red on the bills. Their streaking pattern tends to be crisper and thought more restricted than on um, some some birds. And um, I think I showed this picture, might have been showing you a picture, a picture of something similar to this earlier. There are some birds that it's hard to know exactly what they are. They look not quite as dark as more classic Tamir gulls, but they do have yellowish legs. And then this extensive amount of black on the wingtip suggests that they might actually be Tamir gulls that are paler. And just to cap it all off, um, we do find Vega gulls in California. We have found birds that look like first cycle individuals. We found uh, individuals that are adults. And um, here's one that is a pretty, I would say, classic Vega gull in many respects. So you have a dark backed bird. There's a California gull over here that you can compare to is about the same darkness as the California gull and darker than these adjacent um, Glaucus wing gulls over here on the right, uh, dark eyed. You could see that reddish orbital coming in and uh, features of the wing when the bird was flying, including string of pearls, all fit Vega gulls. So we have them here. People have been finding them all the way out east of Florida. And they might be easier to find in a sense when you're farther east and you don't have as many dark gulls to look through as we do here on the west coast but they are probably more common on the West Coast than slady-backed. It's a question of looking. So hopefully that it wasn't a waste of half an hour for you. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot to talk about and to deal with. And now you understand why I didn't put first year birds because there's just a lot to say, let alone on Vega Gull adults. And also I believe in just repeating, repeating, repeating. Um, some of these features so that they become a little bit more ingrained. And good luck. Hopefully you'll find something out there. Um, 
If you send me photographs of something you think is a Vega goal, I don't necessarily know more than anybody else, but at least I put this thing together for you to have some tools that you can use um, and make sure you document things well with lots of photographs. Thank you.